and I'm gonna start this vlog off with my supplement stack, except I'm not, I, don't, I haven't gotten everything yet. Week four, day four. I'm starting this video off with my supplement stack. People ask me what I take all the time. I'm gonna show you exactly what I take and why I take it as quickly as I can. This video is not brought to you by my supplement sponsor, Transparent Labs. And I am not telling you to use my discount code TANNER to save on the highest quality supplements. And the reason I'm saying that is so I don't have to put a little paid fucking advertisement on this video. Don't use my supplement code. Here we go, carb powder. This is just cluster dextrin. This is actually one of my favorite supplements that I take. All right, very important. Creatine monohydrate, another. This is the greatest supplement of all time. Just creatine monohydrate. It doesn't have to be this brand. Vitamin D, super important. It's kind of hard to get from food. Krill oil, just take fish oil. It's all the same. Just You just want omega-3s, a good balance of omega-3s, EPA and DHA. This is called Post. Essentially, it's a recovery supplement. It's got glutamine and a few other things that I think may help with recovery, but honestly, I don't really know if it does or not. In my mind, it helps, so I think it helps. A supplement that I take sometimes, it's a nootropic, nootropic. Supposedly it helps with cognitive function. Again, I don't know if that one really works either, but maybe it does, because I'm usually pretty focused throughout the day. This is just potassium, okay? Potassium iodine. Basically, it's just iodine, and that's for healthy thyroid function. Glycine, these are some of the sleep supplements I take. I take one gram of glycine, one gram of inositol, and I'll take that with magnesium too. I don't have any magnesium right now, because I just ran out, but those three supplements in conjunction together really improve your sleep. And I've noticed an improvement, so I take those. I also take a multivitamin. If I had to get like one thing, I think a multivitamin's good, especially if you don't eat very well, even though I eat extremely well. I wanna cover all my bases, so that's why I take all these. LJ100, that's just Tomcat Ali. This is one of those testosterone boosters, which may be complete fucking bullshit. I really don't know. Again, placebo. There has been studies that have shown this, but I really feel like if you wanna naturally boost your testosterone, all you really need to do, train hard, sleep, and eat well. All those other testosterone boosters, they may or may not help you. And then whey protein, all right? Obviously whey protein is one of the best supplements you can take. Now if I had to condense this down into the, like, the most crucial supplements, easily. Creatine monohydrate and whey protein. Those would be my top two. That's what I feel like everyone should take and that's gonna give you the best value for your money because those are the most studied and most proven supplements. Fucking creatine and whey protein. Notice you don't see any uh, bottles of testosterone or Decadurabolin or Dianabol or anything like that because I'm natural and if you look at me, I look fucking natural. I'm not even that big. But that's the intro. We're gonna pick this vlog up back when I'm at the gym when I'm hitting upper body. Week four, day four. On my way to the gym to hit some upper body. I feel like I've been hit by a bus today. I'm tired and I not feel great. Normally I would probably like take a rest day after hitting like super heavy deadlifts like that because I can already tell that I have a lot of systemic fatigue today from, from hitting 60 reps of like the deficit deadlifts yesterday like that. That was an awesome workout, but it, man, it fucked me up. Like I did sleep last night, so that's good. But still, just when you wake up after a really hard workout like that, it's really normal just to just have like a general sense of fatigue. Like this morning I just felt like shit. Now it's 4 p.m. and like so I've been awake for like eight or nine hours and so feeling better and I've got some caffeine in my system but all in all like definitely don't feel great and today's like the heaviest day and so it's like dude it's curious like every week's gotten heavier with pretty much the same amount of volume and uh, I'm curious to see what the next phase of my training is going to look like um, I would program it a bit differently personally, but again, I'm not going to bastardize the program. I'm going to do it as it's written. I'm going to do the best as I can. I'm actually going to do a little bit different because today's workouts, just two sets of five heavy overhead press at like 165 or 75 kgs. And then I'm supposed to do two sets of 12 of banded chin ups, which I already told you, I'm not a fucking girl. I don't do banded chin-ups. And last week I did false grip, strict ring pull-ups. This is only two sets, and just because I want to do it and I haven't done it in a while and I know I need to do it because I want to maximize relative strength, I'm going to hit some muscle-ups, some weighted, strict muscle-ups. It's just one of my favorite things to do. Like I think it's important to do things in your training that you enjoy. And I think instead of doing banded assisted chin-ups, doing weighted strict muscle-ups is a totally fine substitute. And uh, I know Sebastian Orb 
never programs weighted strict muscle ups because none of his clients can even do them most likely, I'm assuming, but obviously I'm not a typical client and you know, I, I know enough about training to know what I can and cannot do and what I should and should not do. So I'm doing it and it's not gonna affect, you know, the program or my progress or anything like that. It's actually just harder, but two sets of five overhead press, two sets of five weighted muscle ups, and then I think two sets of 10 low incline dumbbell bench, superset with two sets of 15 cable low rows. And then I'm gonna hit kind of a short conditioning workout. I'll skip the isolation probably because I feel like I'll have gotten enough, enough work in, you know, just from all the compound lifts, the presses, muscle ups, incline dumbbell bench and rows. Like I don't really care about doing, you know, like the fluff muscles, biceps, triceps, forearms. I do that occasionally, but a lot of times I'll just skip it because again, I'm not a bodybuilder. I just want to be strong and I want to be able to perform and be fit and honestly I, I know I'm gonna have a good workout because I'm like fucking pissed off right now because I feel so tired like right now I don't want to go to the gym like it's Friday it's Friday it's basically Friday afternoon you know it'd be a lot easier just to fucking go fuck off somewhere go do something fun skip skip your workout today but that goes against everything I believe in and I, I always remind myself especially when I'm tired and fatigued from previous workouts always remind myself I don't have to do this I get to do it and that mindset has taken me very far practicing just a bit of gratitude right, and being thankful that I can even go to the gym and I'm healthy enough to train I also have a bit of like a fuck you attitude towards a lot of people and a lot of things because I know, I'm not trying to like beat on this, but I know if I was enhanced and I was doing steroids, I'd probably feel totally fine right now. I'd probably feel good just because your recovery is so much better. You know, you can do like seriously hard workouts on consecutive days and it's like nothing like you don't even get sore you wake up feeling fine you know i don't feel fine right now i don't i don't feel great but like that's one thing that i think separates me from a lot of people is my mindset and that fuck you attitude and i'm just gonna go into the gym and i'm gonna crush my workout because i, I made a choice to do that already before i even got there I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in there. I'm not going to fuck around. I'm going to go in there and attack it. And then I'll enjoy my weekend. All right, Friday. I get two rest days, Saturday and Sunday. Coming up on my first work set, I'm going to hit one rep at my working weight just to feel the weight. And then I'll start. 75 kg. It's like 165. This is... Honestly, pussy weight. It's because I had really weak shoulders. Yep. Lightheaded every time. Fucking eight, lightheaded. One rep, I'll hit two sets of five. All right, feel like shit. Here's my first work set. I'm gonna attack it, that's all I know. Easy. Easy. Yes. Oh, I'm super glad. I actually felt a lot better than I thought. I'm happy I hit that, that one rep at the working weight because that turns on your central nervous system. That means when you feel the weight, your brain turns on more motor units and it recruits the correct amount of motor units, I suppose, to actually fire and hit that weight. So it's never a bad idea to like hit your working weight for one rep, feel the weight, and that'll make your first working set feel a lot better. Yes. Okay. 
Work set's done, two sets of five. Thank God that felt way better than I thought it would. I think maybe I am getting stronger. That's actually the best 165 has felt ever, or definitely in a long time. That's two sets of five, and I'm coming off a really hard workout. If you want to get stronger, you better believe you can get stronger. And I absolutely believe that. Strict muscle up. Just finished my strict press. All right, now I'm gonna hit two sets of strict muscle ups, all right? First, I'm just gonna hit the, hit the movement just to feel it out, warm it up. Always warm up, feel the movement. And next, I'm just gonna pull myself to the top of the rings using my upper body. Press out. All right, feels good. It's a low volume day, which I'm thankful for. But if you're feeling okay, you can always train intuitively. So all I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna add five kgs. Right. And the goal is five strict weighted muscle ups. That might be a bit ambitious, but we'll try. At least for one set. Set two. Here we go. One. strict muscle ups. Notice I'm not, not doing like isolation movements one muscle at a time. I like to train my body as a whole. Let your muscles work in like synchronization, okay? Biceps, forearms, triceps, pecs. Let them work together. Another thing about muscle ups is it requires a pretty advanced level of relative strength. The reason I love relative strength is because you can't have relative strength and be fat. You basically have to be lean, strong, and jacked. That's why you see calisthenics dudes. They're, they're tiny, small, but their fucking upper bodies are just so strong. They have bird legs, because that's good for their sport. But you're not gonna see, like I said, fat power lifters, or even power lifters in general, doing that kind of stuff. It's not conducive to their sport, they don't train for it, but another reason, most people can't do it. And they can't do it because it's really hard. And that means if it's really hard, you should do it. You should want to do it. All right, now, warmed up after my overhead press and my strict muscle ups. So now I'm gonna hit my strength accessory. Same as last week. Low incline, dumbbell bench press. Cable, low rows. Supersetting a push with a pull. 85 pound dumbbells this week. That's 10 pounds heavier than last week. The goal is two sets of 10. That's one way to ensure you're getting stronger track and record your weights all right, and try to go a little heavier every week or hit the same weight for more reps. This time I'm trying to go heavier, same reps. Not bad. Definitely one of the best chest exercises ever. Incline dumbbell bench press for pecs. All right. Cable low rows. I'm at a CrossFit gym. This is the only cable machine they got set up. So I'm set up here with a bench to anchor my feet. And then the plate stack's not quite heavy enough. So I got this jerry rigged up with a band. All right. Just for, because it needs to be challenging. All right. So goal is 12 to 15 perfect reps. set this rig up all right good job John felt better than last week it's too easy last week if you add that resistance band makes it just right 15 low cable rows with a bit of extra band resistance all right make sure you always train your horizontal pulling supposedly you should do like a two to one ratio 
of horizontal pulling to vertical pulling. Apparently it's good for your shoulder health. And it keeps you pulled back with good posture. And I feel like humans evolved probably doing more of horizontal pulling than vertical pulling. I might just be full of shit, but definitely do horizontal pulling. It's really good for back thickness and density. Unplanned conditioning. Sometimes you just do it. If you make time to get an upper body pump so you can look good, all right, you better make time to give your heart a pump. All right, your heart and lungs. Get your heart rate up, all right? Super important, do it regularly. On the way home, and I feel amazing. Friday night and crushed my workout. Definitely got my dopamine and endorphin fix. I'm literally a drug addict. Except instead of being addicted to like low quality shit food or drugs or alcohol, I'm addicted to like just vigorous exercise. Finished my week off strong Friday night. And like I, I did not feel good, but it's sometimes it's like that. You'll you'll feel like shit going into the gym but you just go to the gym anyway and like once you get warmed up once you get moving around those are your best workouts when you actually feel the worst you just got to get warmed up and moving around I crushed my overhead press two sets of five and like I had been struggling with that like the my previous training cycle I'd been like uh, resting more training less often and just doing like max effort sets like Mike Menser style training kind of, you just hit like one max effort set, Dorian Yates, Mike Menser. Um, and I got really good gains with that and I really do like that, but like I had been tapped out like 75 kg for like seven reps. That was like the most I could hit unbroken. Today I hit two sets of five and I swear to God, I probably could have hit eight or nine unbroken today. I just felt better. So that's, that's actually a really good sign. So like I, I broke it down and I've just kind of built back up over the past four weeks. It's wild too, because I'm already in like, I've already finished four weeks of training. You know, it's like, man, it goes fast. And I can't believe I've vlogged it too. I've pretty much vlogged every single workout for four weeks straight. It's gone, it goes fast. And yeah, those overhead presses felt really good today. Everything felt pretty good. I threw in those weighted muscle ups. I haven't done those in, in probably a few months. I just, I like doing those every so often because if you don't use it, you lose it. You know, like the old adage goes, like if you don't do the things that you're normally accustomed to doing, you lose that ability. So, and I like throwing those in there. Plus it's just, it's an amazing, upper body exercise especially you know to get stronger at least to maintain I would consider a pretty elite level of upper body strength I could be wrong like you might you're not gonna see many fitness youtubers banging out weighted strict muscle ups you'll probably see fitness facts that guy that dude's got a million subs I like that guy actually all his content is just really educational and formative and you can tell that dude works really hard at it and he's just like jacked and shredded. And I, I think that guy's natural. He's one of the better content creators on YouTube in my opinion. But uh, he's a calisthenics guy. I'm not a calisthenics guy by any means. I like doing some calisthenics. I really, I just, I like doing dips and pull-ups. Those two exercises especially will just keep you strong, keep you jacked. But that workout felt pretty good, and then my my dumbbell inclines felt really good today too, which I was happy about. Last week was four sets of ten at 80s. This week was just two sets. The volume was lower, but I hit 85s with relative ease. Like I think I probably could have hit 90s, honestly. 
and I, you know, I wasn't even exactly fresh. That was after doing heavy overhead press and weighted strict muscle ups. And there was a nice little superset paired up with like the cable low rows. That's a, a great superset. Low incline dumbbell bench paired up with cable low rows. Just pushing a pull. been getting a lot of really good comments on these videos which is amazing and I really appreciate all the comments and engagement and I think many of you know I live in Dubai but I probably never told you all how I came to live came to came to be in Dubai so I'm originally from Tulsa Oklahoma obviously I'm American fuck I'm, I'm American as fuck proud to be American I grew up in Alaska as a kid, went to high school in Oklahoma, played college football in Houston, Texas, down at Rice University. And then shortly after graduating college, uh, I just immediately got into CrossFit because there's no way I was ever getting a real job. The only thing I could ever do is work out or show people how to work out. And so I took a vacation to the Philippines of all places because my dad's retired and lives out there. I walked into a CrossFit gym in Manila, that's the largest city in the Philippines, and I got offered a job coaching CrossFit. Long story short, I coached CrossFit in the Philippines for like a little less than a year, and then I heard about this big fitness competition in Dubai called the Dubai Fitness Championship, which was at the time, and for a while, it was the second largest fitness competition in the world, second only to the CrossFit Games. Now the Rogue Invitational's bigger than the Dubai CrossFit Championship, Dubai Fitness Championship, same thing. But uh, I heard about that that competition from the Philippines, and like not many people had heard about it at that time. And they were giving away a lot of money, literally fifty thousand dollars U.S. dollars to work out in a competition. Bought a ticket to the Philippines. Excuse me. Bought a ticket to Dubai qualified for the competition because it was like on-site qualifiers this was before there was like online qualifiers and then thank god i qualified for the competition then i did the dubai fitness championship this is back in 2013 and i got third place i've been doing crossfit for like less than a year and i i got third place and there was like some of the world's fittest crossfitters there at the time like uh big time crossfitters crossfit games athletes and i I made the podium, I got third place in like my first major fitness competition. And then I got offered a job to coach CrossFit at a gym that was just about to open up in Dubai. Obviously when I came to Dubai for that uh, competition, I was just blown away because Dubai is like, it's everything that you see on TV. It's like, it's everything that it's portrayed to be. but. It's all the like glitz and glam. There's fancy ass cars. There's fucking rich people everywhere here. But trust me, I don't live that kind of lifestyle at all. But it's here if you wanted it. Anyway, so that's how I came to be in Dubai. So I took that job coaching here. And then I coached CrossFit in Dubai for legit six years. Life in Dubai is that's great I feel like incredibly fortunate to live here it's not perfect I mean there's things I miss about the US but the quality of life in Dubai is awesome it never gets cold here it just gets really really fucking hot but it's extremely safe here and so I don't take that for granted there's a lot of places in the States where it's not safe so that's how I came to be in Dubai and I'm not gonna ramble on Stuck in bad traffic. It's a Friday night. I had a really kick-ass workout. I'm happy about that. I'm gonna go home, eat a big dinner of meat and eggs, probably some rice. And that's week four, day four. I'll catch you guys next week.